The Greek word for church is ecclesia and it literally means called out ones. We have been called out of the ways of the world to be separate from the world in thought, speech and behaviour and it's our job to help bring others out too. We are meant to look different, extremely different, more different than we're comfortable with. We're never told to physically withdraw from the world but we are told to distinguish ourselves in the midst of it by what fuels, inspires, entertains and motivates us. Consequently we must think, speak and act in noticeably different ways. We must exhibit what we claim to believe in. What's on the inside must reveal itself on the outside. If we don't then we're effectively hiding our light under a bowl so that no one can see it and the darkness will increase. If we have any desire to change things, and we should, we must be bold and courageous. We must be willing to stand alone in the school, the university, the workplace, and to be salt and light. And as we do so, the Bible tells us over and over that we will provoke one of two extreme reactions, revival or riots. Firstly, riots. If you belong to Jesus, the world will hate you. That's just the way it is. It hated Jesus when he gave them his message and it'll hate you when you give them his message too. If you're not willing to be hated for his name's sake, then you're not really his at all. It comes with the territory. Jesus said, all men will hate you because you are my followers. As a Christian, you will bother people's consciences. Your higher morality will cast them in a bad light. Your integrity will underscore their own corruption and you will make them feel agitated as you remind them of truths that they try hard to ignore. They'll brand you as sanctimonious, deluded, and they'll call you every other name under the sun. Something even worse may happen. But if you're not willing to identify with Jesus in public, he won't be willing to identify with you before God. Now that is a somber thought. Be brave, Christian. But hatred is just one of the consequences of letting your light shine before the world. The good news is that you will also save souls. The truth always causes this extreme division or polarization. When you show people the moral line, it's true that some people will hate you for bothering their conscience and will remain entrenched in their position, far from God. But others will be attracted to what you're saying. They will be drawn towards God. Martin Lloyd-Jones said, when the church is absolutely different from the world, she invariably attracts it. It is then that the world is made to listen to her message. When Christians are around, we should naturally be causing this division. Paul writes, Our lives are like a Christ-like fragrance rising up to God, but this fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To those who are perishing, we are a dreadful smell of death and doom, but to those who are being saved, we are a life-giving perfume. Paul doesn't say that we are a neutral fragrance that will cause no offence to anyone. He doesn't say that we'll smell like the world does so that no one will even know we're a Christian. He says we will cause a strong polarisation. He also writes, the message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction, but we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. Again, this is the polarization effect. To some, our message sounds like a crazy delusion, but to others, it will save their souls. Let's not be afraid of that division. In order to save some, you must be willing to be hated by all. We are the ecclesia, the called out ones. Jesus said, the world would love you as one of its own if you belong to it, but you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world, so it hates you. The world doesn't understand light because it lives in the dark. It doesn't understand good because it lives in evil. It doesn't know the benchmark, the standard of goodness, the good apple, the absolute light, the reference point on the moral compass, the Lord, the King, God Almighty. So we have to show him to them by our words and deeds. In Romans 10 it says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? It's really quite simple. It's no use tutting and shaking our heads when we watch the news and feeling sorry for a lost and dying world. It's no use wishing the politicians would do something about it. It's no use hunkering down and hoping Jesus comes before we're personally affected by the decay. It's our job, our great commission, to go out and do something about it. Look at Tyler's graph again. Notice that the bridge between spiritual faith and liberty is courage. 
One of the first signs that someone has been truly touched by Christ is that they develop astonishing bravery. Remember how broken and timid the disciples were after Jesus' death and how courageous they became once they'd seen him resurrected. From timid lambs, they transformed into brave lions that would rather die than recant their faith. Those are the people that turn the world upside down. These are the ones who create liberty, and we now need that same courage to go out and change the world like they did, and like all good things, that starts with God. Renounce comfort and lukewarm apathy. Those things are mortal enemies to your soul. We need to get on fire for God. Yes, we've heard that phrase so often that it's become a cliché, but it simply means we need to turn what we say we believe into action. True inner change always reveals itself externally in the end. So we need to be willing to take the time to intercede for those around us so that their eyes and hearts will be opened. We need to pray on behalf of people who don't even know they need prayer. We need to repent and fast for the souls of our nation. And what's more, we need to tell people about Jesus. We need to get out into our society to tell people about the God who can save them and to bring uncompromising light into the darkness. How much do we want to see people restored to God? What are we willing to do to see revival? How courageous are we willing to be?